Thanks for joining us. My name is Joe Bergeron. I'm with the Association of Wild Credit Unions, and this is another episode of Executive Exchange. Uh, we're here in the office of the Association of Vermont Credit Unions, uh, and today's uh, presentation that we're doing is uh, an interview to get to know uh, the newest chief executive of a credit union in Vermont, uh, and he's right with me here. That's Mike Schumann from Vermont VA Federal Credit Union, White River Junction, Vermont. Thanks for joining us today, Mike. Thanks great for having me. Sure, appreciate it. And for making the trek up to the association office and everything. My pleasure. Uh, it was great to have the opportunity to have you meet the uh, other employees in the association and see where you work and everything. And uh, it was generous of you to take time to do this. My so pleasure. Thanks. Um, so I'm sure everybody watching wants to know a little bit about you. So, uh, you know, the very basic question, why don't we start at the beginning? How'd you get your start in credit unions? And how's it end up that you uh, come to Vermont and, and run a credit union? Well, I've actually been in credit unions for 13 years, a little over 13 years. I started with Medical Area Federal Credit Union in the Longwood Medical Area of Boston. I love the idea of uh, different type of financial services, and credit unions truly are a unique resource uh, for financial services, and I just love that. In addition, um, it seemed like good job security because you're actually helping out employees in the medical field. So it was a wonderful thing for me to help people who really needed help. Um, on one hand, and also it was a growing industry, so I like the job security associated with it. And I, it was one of those things I'd never seen it before. I've been in financial services many years before that, banks, etc. I'd never seen the amount of loyalty that was engendered uh, between a credit union versus a bank or other financial institution, but there was an incredible amount of loyalty by the member owners. I mean, it really is a very powerful thing that whereas cooperatives, member ownership, it has meaning, it has value to our members as opposed to being a customer or a client. I was there for about a uh, little more than 10 years and that was a good situation. Um, what ended up happening is that Medical Area Credit Union merged with, you know, we went from 28 million to 84 million dollars. So we grew quite a bit. We were small, fairly nice small credit union, but we grew and we did a nice job in growing. Um, but eventually, um, we merged with RTN Federal Credit Union, uh, which is the former Raytheon Credit Union. Mm. It's an irony of life that a uh, defense contractor credit union ties in with medical, like kind of this complementary in an odd way. And um, I was there for just a few months during the merger. It, uh, it wasn't a good fit for me, um, the culture. And so I, I moved on. Um, I eventually landed at um, Merrimack Valley Federal Credit Union in Lawrence, Mass. Um, wonderful credit union. Um, I mean, I've been with um, Medical Area, went from 28 to 84 million, which was nice to see, small. But uh, Mer Merrimack Valley was f almost $500 million when we started, or about $530 million now. And I joined as VP of Lending there. They really, they were all about loans, loans, loans. And they weren't sure how to get there. And they'd actually seen loan portfolio go from $360 million down to $228 mm -hmm. million. Um, and I got there pretty much at the trough and um, got them up to $284 million when I found this opportunity. And I think they're about $290 million now in loan portfolio. Their assets haven't grown much, but their loan to asset ratio has grown very nicely and their earnings and um, just a, a wonderful place, wonderful uh, people that I worked with them, and I loved it. I heard about this opportunity and Vermont is such a beautiful place. Um, I didn't have to deal with all the traffic in and around Boston, which was nice for me. It uh, probably extend my life some, and it's just so pretty up here. And I was just ready for that opportunity to move up to become a CEO. Great, great. Well, hope it works out to be a good move for you long term, and welcome to Vermont. Thank you. Um, so, you know, Vermont VA Federal Credit Union is, I believe, the oldest credit union in the state of Vermont. It's the oldest still existing credit union in the state of Vermont. Um, uh, but it's new to you. Um, so, you know, I, I'm not sure that everybody uh, is as familiar with Vermont VA Federal Credit Union uh, as you and I might be. So, tell us something about the credit union and, and what you found when you got there. Well, as we know that there are different types of credit unions, Joe. I mean, there's employer-based and there's community-based. Um, this, uh, this is the oldest credit union in Vermont, so it's a great honor and privilege from my perspective to have been chosen by the board to, um, to actually become the CEO of the oldest credit union in Vermont. Um, 1939 is when its charter um, started to serve the employees of the Vermont VA Hospital in White River Junction. And what happened is uh, over the past year, the board of directors and 
on my predecessor decided, well, maybe we should move into a community um, type of charter. And that's what happened. So as of January 1st of 2015 this year, we went from a, an employer-based to a community-based. Uh, so it's a different approach, but fundamentally, it's the same approach as a credit union. It's a cooperative. We have member owners. We really take care of their services and their needs and, what, and be responsive to them because they are member owners. So we take good care of them. And that will never change as far as I'm concerned. That's just the, the credit union philosophy. It's a, it's a huge differentiator. Um, taking care of members, serving them, helping them. I always like to say we like to put the credit in credit union. So, um, you know, Vermont VA credit union has, it, has this very long history in the state of Vermont, um, but all with employees and family members of the hospital and, and related. Yeah. Um, now going to community charter just very recently, um, you know, most most or many credit units have gone from a single sponsor, or maybe multi-sponsor, to a community-based charter. Uh, but still, in your situation with this credit having this long history in this one uh, employer group, uh, it's got to be quite a shift mm -hmm. in thought process for the board, for the employees, marketing, branding. You know, mm -hmm. and, uh, even perhaps over time, the types of services that you provide and everything. Yeah. Well, I mean, for the staff. It's business as usual. Whoever walks through that door, if they need help, we're there to help them. And uh, they could be an, ex an existing member, they could be a family member, they could be a prospective member. So we, that, that doesn't change. Um, the board, it's a great board of seven people who were tied into the hospital because that's our history. But they're, they're a progressive board. They're, they're looking at ways for us to reach out to the community. We have a variety of, uh, of ideas to help the community become aware that we are now a community-based credit union, that we're available for products and services in the community, and as I always like to say, that um, the credit unions are the best value in financial services. Um, it's not just about providing a great product or service. We do that. We provide great service. We have great products. Um, it's about financial literacy, financial education. Um, from a lending perspective, because that's my background, I'm always trying to get to yes. Getting to yes is a big deal for me. I want to make sure that I am helping the member in an efficient manner if they're uh, eligible and credit worthy for a loan today. And if they're not, how do we make them credit worthy? Is it a co-signer at that point in time? Is it financial education, something to help them get from point A to point B where they need a car? I want to help them get that car. And if they have some challenges to their financial life, what do we have to do? And folks that, uh, members that are on board with, with helping themselves, we'll do whatever we can to help them get into the car, the house if they need that, uh, if that's their, their goal, whatever their goals are. I mean, that's the nature of credit unions. We want to help people reach their financial goals, whatever it may be. That's great, Mike. Um, you know, you mentioned um, financial literacy, mm -hmm. and that reminds me that one of the new things that I saw coming from uh, from you uh, that was new to not just this credit union but credit unions in Vermont was the cable TV um, educational um, segments that you started doing and I think you've done three or four I'm not sure um, but talk to us about that for a second well that's actually a very interesting quote I, I give all the credit in the world to my sister my sister um, got a degree in video 33 years ago she went into public access TV, and she's been doing it ever since. So she has a real commitment to that. And she's brought us on board. We've essentially become a public access TV family. We've made contributions. And when you think about it, it makes a lot of sense. Public access community TV is um, all of, it's a nonprofit to help the community in a variety of ways, informational, educational. But they're a huge part of the community. You think about us, even if, if we're an employer-based credit union or a community-based, we're a big part of the community, too. We're a nonprofit. Um, a cooperative credit union and we like to work cooperatively with other credit unions in this case with the public access so ultimately what we're trying to do is not selling things because I don't think credit unions want to sell stuff we want to provide opportunities and services but what we do is we, we provide this show and you can watch it on Vimeo or YouTube or actually on the, the cable station and it's being spread around um, not just in the, the Hartford CATV8, other local credit unions, um, excuse me, other community access stations, they do this. They're, they're big on you know, having, oh, this is interesting and good information, like a Susie Orman show. And that's what it is. Um, 
we try to provide really good information to help people reach their goals. And people, they want to succeed with their financial goals. They don't plan to fail, sometimes they just fail to plan. So we want to put them in a situation where they reach the goals. Maybe it's retirement, live beneath your means, save, invest, um, maybe they want a car. What do I have to do? Um, if your credit's good, what do I do? How do I establish credit? Credit unions are great at helping po folks establish credit. Um, it could be anything and everything, whatever it may be. We've, uh, the first show was fundamentally about cars and mortgages, just to give people an idea of what they're all about and what it takes to get a mortgage or a car loan. But we also have a focus on what I call, we're talking FICO. FICO being Fair Isaac Company, the credit scoring uh, company. And it's a mystery to a lot of people. What is FICO? What does it take to, uh, to, to get a good credit score? What is a good credit score? So we try to break it down. The second show that we had talked about taking control. And that's so important from our perspective and it ties into the credit union world so well. We want folks to take charge and take control, um, not put their heads in the sand and, and say, well, be fatalistic. What's going to happen is going to happen. You know what? You take charge and you take control of your financial destiny, you're going to be more likely to be successful in any realm of your finances. finances. It could be getting that car, getting in the house. Maybe you want to start a business. So essentially, put together a plan and, and figure out how it goes. The most recent show we just uh, shot earlier, um, actually last week, that was fundamentally some of the best practices that I see on a daily basis, I put on our Facebook page. So on our Facebook page, you'll see at least one, sometimes two or three different things um, on our Facebook page. And then I was just talking about some of the best ones that we saw. Everything from Oprah Winfrey's best advice to Warren Buffett's best advice. People who are extraordinarily smart and, um, and have done well. And um, you'd want to recognize what they've done well and it's okay to steal these things. These are best practices, so we're trying to find best practices. That's great. And I think it's great that you're doing these public access broadcasts. And, uh, and it's just you and a camera and whatever you might have on the screen behind you talking to people um, from your experience. And, uh, and I've watched uh, uh, the, most, the first one and the most recent one. I don't think I saw the second one. Uh, yeah. But they were great. Thank you. Um, so you've been at a number, you, you have you know, quite a few years in credit union land, been at a number of credit unions of varying sizes. Mm -hmm. Um, is there anything that you've observed in your time that you think is, um, you know, a common, like, biggest challenge to all credit unions, or is it more particular to, you know, a size issue of where you are at now versus, you know, some other size? It's a, it's a great question. Um, you know, from my experience, I think it's very individualized. You could have a credit union in Longwood Medical Area that needs to grow because they need to grow income because it's a very expensive area. So that's one experience. Um, Merrimack Valley Credit Union, they were bigger. They had more resources, but also they, had, they were very focused on the expense ratio. Um, so that was important to them. And, but they wanted to do, the, one of their focus was loans, loans, loans. So, and it was frustrating. It's very frustrating for them and their staff to see a loan portfolio go down. And the opposite, when it started going up, Boy, did that help morale in a huge way. So, and where we are presently, um, Vermont VA has such a, a great history, and the members, um, there's a commonality in, in some of these places. Great uh, member service, taking care of the members, member loyalty, these are all similar things. But tied into that, you also have, um, you have very specific credit union issues, um, and we have, some challenges moving forward. We don't have um, certain products and services I would like to see that would be attracted to the community. Um, our board met last week. We talked about mobile banking. We do not have it presently. I, I think it's an essential part to get um, millennials and younger members to join. Sure. So uh, there are a few things um, that are going on. My predecessor did a fabulous job um, in, in what she did and she was ready to retire and um, it opened the door for me between her and the board. Um, I, I'm very enthusiastic and looking forward. I think we have a, a great, great future ahead of us. There's certainly lots of challenges, and you mentioned mobile banking and you know, 
uh, new forms of payments and there's a lot of competing vehicles in all of those areas and everything and um, it's uh, quite a bit to wade through uh, these days uh, yeah. to compete with everyone else. Um, but you know that that ties back to uh, your reference to having uh, recently expanding the credit union's field of membership and so what I know it's community based but what is the the geographical footprint? It's a great question Joe. Um, it is actually two states. It's um, two counties in New Hampshire, two counties in Vermont. So it's Grafton and Sullivan County in um, New Hampshire. It's Orange and Windsor County. What exactly does that mean? If you live, work, worship, or attend schools in any of those counties, you're eligible to join. It's very simple. You put $5 into a savings account and you're a member. So there's, there must be quite a bit more competition in that area for you now too as a result of going to um, a community charter. Um, you know, as a single sponsor, I'm sure there's a certain degree, I mean, you're still in competition, but there's a certain degree of um, a default built-in loyalty because you're in the building with the employees, and what, or a lot of them anyway. Right. Um, but there's quite a few financial institutions with access in that footprint that you have in that White River Junction, Lebanon uh, corridor and whatnot. Yeah. So that must change a thought process a lot uh, in credit union. You know, to be honest with you, it doesn't. Um, I'm just really focused, and I know our staff is really focused on serving our members and getting prospective members. I don't worry about what other financial institutions do. As a credit union, we provide a great value. There are other credit unions in the area that do a great job and provide great value also. I, I don't worry about um, others. I worry about what can we do well what can we do to help our members, to serve our community, to get information out there? Um, and once again, everything at a reasonable cost to our members. Um, you know, we're, we're doing public access amongst other things. The Facebook page is new. We're doing all these things and we're trying to do it at a really low cost. I have a very small budget for marketing and I'll be just as happy to spend nothing on marketing and promotion and advertising. I'd be happy that if we can just go out there and, and take care of our members and, uh, and have them spread the word. This is the place to go, this is the place to be, um, and they will make you happy. We have, our t I, I'll tell you a quick story. One of my favorite things is the woman who handles um, the teller work uh, through the drive-through. She has dog biscuits. She knows all the names of the dogs of the members who <laughs> drive through. She knows the names of the members' dogs. Yeah, and she hands out the dog biscuits and everyone's happy. This is a little thing, but it's such a nice touch to help the member, develop the dog. Everyone's smiling. She's always smiling. And our staff is, they're a great crew and they're very happy doing what they're doing, which is serving our members. That's the goal. That's the whole thing. Yeah. Um, so, you know, declining number of credit unions, and you've seen it in Massachusetts where you were, Vermont, everywhere. Um, a lot of popularity of credit unions these days. Um, you know, m more press coverage, people gravitating towards credit unions because of the cooperative nature, better service, better rates and fees and whatnot. What do you think the future looks like? Uh, you know, and anybody can say anything they want, right? Because nobody's got a crystal ball, right. but you know, for your forecast, five, 10 years down the road, whatever, what, what do you see coming down the road for credit unions? Credit unions are an amazing model. They are, from my perspective, someone who's been in financial services for more than 20 years, they are, if not the perfect model, because I don't know if there's perfection, but they are damn close to it, darn close to it. We provide such great service. We provide great products. We care about our communities. We care about a variety of things that, um, I think there's a lot of lip service with especially the larger banks and uh, I think that we are extraordinarily well positioned to grow. Now I can make a prediction on what's going to happen as far as smaller credit unions. I think it's you know it's a case by case basis. If a credit union is, is going to struggle then they are likely to be merged and that seems to be the direction things are heading and uh, I, I think there's it's unfortunate in many ways but it is what it is. But I'll tell you one quick story that tells me everything, and I just live and die by this story when I was at medical area. January 2009, two months after the financial crisis, I had a member who worked at one of the hospitals, relatively new credit, but he had a good credit score. He had a 704 credit score, which was fine, but it was relatively new. He did a good job. And he worked at a hospital, so he had a good job, and he had a good income. 
he went to bank. Oh, well, I don't want to say the bank. He went to a big bank <laughs> um, to get a car loan. January two thousand nine. Walked into the branch. Um, did I get approved for the car loan? The response was, "We can't tell you. you can't tell me. You'll get something in the mail." Just there's a certain amount of humanity associated with helping people, or in this case, not. He ended up getting declined with a 704 credit score and a job at a hospital with good employment and good income. It was absolutely crazy. He walks into my office. I'm the VP of Lending at Medical Area Credit Union, and he's frustrated. Um, let's sit down. Let's apply. He applied for a loan. Um, I pulled his credit. I did a quick debt to income ratio, and uh, within five minutes, congratulations, you're approved. Here is a few things that we need from your dealer and your insurance agent. Have it sent over to us and uh, we'll have you come in and sign for the loan. He was dumbfounded. Within five or ten minutes he was getting something he couldn't get from a big bank. A big bank that had all this money and it was just frustrating for him. For him. For me, it showed the distinction and the difference between a credit union and a bank. This, uh, we as a credit union were there, we're a common sense lender, he was a good borrower, and he was approved for a loan, he got his car loan, he's a loyal member, and he will always be a loyal member, and that's why uh, there is loyalty and it goes both ways. That's a great story. Yeah. And there's lots of those in, yep. in credit union land, in your credit union and others. Um, anything else you want to touch on? Um, I just feel honored and privileged to be the, the new CEO after um, succeeding a really, really good CEO uh, prior and for the oldest credit union in the state of Vermont. Uh, it's, a, it's an amazing honor. Uh, we just want to help our members, our prospective members, folks in the community, and um, make a difference in people's lives. That one story about that gentleman who worked at a hospital, that exemplifies everything that we do and we try to do that every day with every member i can't always do it but i so focus on putting the credit in credit union every opportunity being an opportunity getting to yes these are things that they sound cliche but we live it and breathe it every day someone walks through that door and they want a loan from us they need help whatever the circumstance may be it is our obligation as staff as management to help our member owner and once again I want to help them today but if I can't I'm gonna be honest with them and explain the circumstances why I can't be honest with them uh, well I can't help them excuse me we're going to help them somewhere down the line but they also have to help us you have got to help me help you we do that you're gonna be in a better situation and that's on a one-to-one -one basis and we're putting it out there uh, through our public access it is all about people helping people be a unique resource out there, get the information out there, and it's all about helping people. Thanks for uh, being with us today, Mike. Um, I greatly appreciate it, uh, visiting with the association here and, and visiting with you. And um, you know, it sounds like you're off to a great start at Vermont VA Federal Credit Union and that you've got that credit union doing great things for your members, for the community. So. Uh, you know, hopefully there's a bright future for your credit and all of its members. Thank you, Joe. It's been Thanks nice very pleasure. much.